God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words in, abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Concern, fear about the unknown future. 
that's all very natural and all very normal. But Paul, in the first reading, reminds us to be thankful. And I know from our recent days here together that the dominant feelings today are ones of thanksgiving and joy and hope. Not only because we are celebrating the creation of a new province, the United States and Canada, but also because we want to give thanks for the richness and fruitfulness of the story so far in each of those provinces. It is a union, a marriage if you like, the creation of something new and we are thankful because today we open a new chapter in the story of these two provinces and in the ongoing story of our congregation. But what might the scriptures of today say to us about the new reality we are celebrating? The readings used today are the readings of the Feast of Madeline Sophie. And the Gospel was one that was dear to Sophie Barra's heart. Because it illustrates very well the profound relationship which she yearned for all of her life. The relationship she yearned for with God. And the relationship she desired for each of her sisters. And the Gospel uses a very powerful image of belonging. I am the true vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. A powerful image, because vines and branches are inseparable. And that image reminds us of the constant theme of our scriptures that each one has received the promise of God's faithful and everlasting love and nothing, nothing can come between us and that love. We belong to God. But the image of the vine and the branches also expresses another profound truth. He removes every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. For vines to bear fruit from year to year, they must be cut back and pruned. Sophie Barra knew that well from her own childhood in the vineyards of Chwani. Cutting back vines in the deep winter so that they could bear more fruit in the summer and the fall. Everybody here, I think, knows that image played out in their own lives. When we try to remain faithful and fruitful in a commitment or a relationship, then at times we must open our hearts to being pruned, changed, transformed. And sometimes that change and transformation is radical and painful, and sometimes gentle, inviting, imperceptible. But God's invitation to change and transformation is always there, and it is always there in order that we might love more deeply and that our loving will be more fruitful. So you might ask yourself, how does that speak to what we are doing here today? I read recently that the journey towards building a new province asks the community and the individual members to let go and live in the present for the sake of the religious community of the future. What might the letting go and living in the present consist of in this situation? Each and every one of us here is called and invited to let ourselves be changed 
transformed, pruned, in order to embrace this new reality. And this will require different things of each one. And each one of you here will know what you are being invited to do. It may be to give up the struggle. It may be the struggle to give up control of something. Or replacing our trust in someone else or another structure. It may be opening ourselves to a change of heart. Making a conscious decision to let go of a past hurt or an entrenched position, a prejudice, a stereotype, an unhelpful attitude. It may mean asking for the grace to be open to a new possibility or a different way of seeing something. The courage to trust and walk into the unknown or the grace to respond to a call, or it may mean simply a commitment to welcoming the new. And why would we do that? Why do we ask for the grace to let ourselves be changed or transformed? For those of us who are religious of the sacred heart, we do it because we profess with our lives that we belong to God. We commit with our lives to abiding in God as lover, beloved, friend. And as Iris and Jane, we strive to see and understand life and reality with God's pierced heart. We ask for this grace because transformed by the Spirit, our hearts can be more compassionate and understanding and open for mission. In short, we will bear more fruit and be more loving. In the society, we have learnt that a reconfiguration does not mean that a new sense of unity automatically emerges on the day a prophet begins. As Kathleen's letter reminded us, a province does not become a province on the day it officially begins. And in some ways, the hard work of building community is just beginning. And the relationships will take time to live into. And a religious community is based not only on the individual and communal relationships with God, but also on individual and communal relationship among its members, collaborators, associates, and those to whom the community is committed to serve in mission. The first reading of today, from Paul to the Colossians, reminds us that for a heart set on God, certain values and attitudes are required for building community. Compassion, kindness, Humility, patience, forgiveness, peace. And I know that those same values underpin the invitation in this year's letter for the Feast of the Sacred Heart, which called us once again to reveal the strength and tenderness of Jesus' love for each one. And I quote, Little by little, through growing into the attitudes of Jesus, through our efforts to be God's heart in a world where love and relationships are scarred by deep wounds, our own hearts are softened, stretched, pierced, healed and strengthened. Through the heart journeys we touch in our ministries and relationships, we learn to love more freely, to care more fully, to be bearers of God's tenderness. foundations in the United States and Canada, our foremothers, were resolute, brave and generous souls, who read the signs of their times and who stepped into the chaos 
and the unknown of their day, trusting only in God's guidance and in providence. Those who established the first Canadian foundation in 1842 were sent from New York in the depths of winter to Saint Jacques de la Chivin near Montreal. In what can only be described as a nightmare journey, which as you can imagine, being Canada involved a lot of ice and cold weather, they persisted in their dangerous and uncomfortable journey. Because, as one said, we have been told to go, but we have not been told to return. <laughs> as Jane reminded us yesterday in her reflection on the future process in Canada, there is no going back now, only moving forward. And in this moving forward, we are called, all of us, to be as generous, as brave, and as resolute as those early pioneers, and as, though, as, as resolute, brave, and generous as the women who have gone before us. Let us pray for each other that we will continue wherever we are, to be bearers of God's tender love for each other and for our world. In a moment, I will invite the two provincial teams to come forward to begin the rite of transition. But before that happens, let us take a quiet moment to bring into mind and heart the graces you need to embrace this new moment in our history. Sisters, friends, companions on the journey, trusting in the fidelity of God and the love of our sisters, with courage and with confidence, let us embrace this new moment. I now invite provincial teams of the United States and Canada to come before the altar. of our history, keeper of our stories, dreamer of our dreams. This candle held by Mary represents the lives of all of our Canadian sisters, all the members of the Canadian province, both living and deceased, from 1842 to 2013. Gracious God, with you there is no time. One day is like a thousand years. O oh, ancient love, support us now as we reach back into our history. Unite us with all who have gone before us. Kindle in our hearts the faith, love, and hope of Madeleine Sophie Barrow and Rose Philippine Duchenne and all our ancestors known and unknown around the world. Gather into your heart all the chapters of our history. Integrate the joys and the sorrows into one great experience of Korunum. 
With all the love that is in our hearts, we bless this candle and we honor its light for all of the lives it symbolizes. May the light of this candle fill us with love and with peace. May this light remind us of the flame of courage and faith that burned throughout the years in the hearts of our sisters in the midst of the many hardships and the uncertainties of their lives. Their courage inspires us, and their love now impels us forward. And may this candle also burn for the joys and the successes of their lives. In thanksgiving, we now turn to our future. Everything has been prepared. Many things are in process. The new is unfolding in full confidence. We are moving forward in a rhythm which calls Canada and the United States to a moment that our RSCJ ancestors had never anticipated. of our stories, you continually surprise us with new life. Give us new eyes to see that we are changed today as we become no longer two provinces of the society, but one new province planted firmly in the heart of your son. We have listened inward and have heard God's voice calling us forward. A new course of life lies open to us as Society of the Sacred Heart, United States and Canada. And I would invite the RSCJ say together. In the richness of our two nations and the diversity of our commitments, our constitutions will be a bond of love and unity, placing upon us all the seal of God's work. We shall form but one heart and one mind, giving reality to the words, the word
brothers, that these are gifts of bread and wine that would be acceptable to Almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the of all of his church. Look graciously on our offerings and petitions, O Lord, through the intercession of St. Madeline Sophie and the compassionate love of the heart of your Son. May they keep us Help us to attain our eternal salvation. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right in us. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. You are glorified in your saints, for their glory is the crowning of your gifts. In their lives on earth, you have given us an example. In our communion with them, you give us their friendship. In their prayer for the church, you give us strength and protection. This great company of witnesses spurs us on to victory, to share their prize of everlasting glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. With angels and archangels and the whole company of saints, we sing the unending hymn of praise. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the Paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, Anthony, our Bishop, with all priests, bishops, deacons, and religious, and your entire people, as we walk in your ways of faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Remember the members of your community today who have gone before you. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with her blessed spouse, Joseph, with the Apostles the Martyrs, St. Madeline Sophie, and with all the saints who shall praise and exalt you through Christ your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Thank you. 
The Mucha Doom Braille, yeah. The... Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. 